he's going to flag us five minutes. Five, five minutes, minutes to the end. Yeah. We can start probably at 3.15. Yeah. Check, check, check. Yep, there we go. Hey, guys. Good afternoon to everyone here. Um, today we are going to talk about the DVRs, progress from like Juno to Kilo. Um, for people who have attended the Paris Summit, uh, you might have attended a session on the DVR. So we gave a high-level overview of DVR and its architecture. And today, um, we're going to cover some more topics on DVR, which we missed it in the Paris Summit, because I wanted to go deep dive into the DVR and show you uh, how the architecture fits into the existing uh, model of L3 agents and the namespaces, uh, compute node, and the network node. So there was a lot of questions that came up after uh, our discussions and also through the community. People wanted to understand more on, OK, what are the internals of DVR, how it works, uh, so that we wanted to make sure that we convey to the audience here what are the internals. So th and then we will also cover uh, some of the topics that we touched uh, from Juno to Kilo. Um, most of the uh, stuff that we did for DVR um, I think we gave a future plan for DVR when we uh, presented for the Paris Summit. And from there, we took uh, all the backlog items, and we have been uh, working on those backlog items. And we will try to cover what are the items that we completed in this cycle and what are the items that we are actually foreseeing to finish it off uh, during the Liberty cycle. So uh, the agenda here would be. Um, just to, as I said, we're going to give a deep dive on DVR. And we are going to talk about um, what are the service support uh, by DVR with, with respect to uh, Neutron. Uh, because when we uh, presented in Paris during the Juno time cycle, um, we had a VPN as a service not working with DVR. So that was one other thing that we achieved uh, during the Juno cycle. So right now, uh, VPN as a service will, will be working with DVR. And then um, we'll be talking about the VLAN support for DVR, which um, was not in the Juno release, which we have done it for the Kilo release. And then the multiple network support um, is still there um, in the Kilo release. And uh, we had a legacy router migration to DVR for, um, for the admins who wanted to actually migrate their legacy routers to the DVR. So uh, we have accomplished that during the Juno cycle. And uh, most of the like around 70% of the work that we did in the Juno cycle was to uh, have a stability in DVR, uh, because we have seen a uh, lot of instability issues that was causing uh, because of multiple patches added on top of DVR. So now we are trying to reduce the stability uh, issues that was caused. So um, that's one other issue. And then we are going to talk about the DVR performance um, in this session to give you a heads up on uh, how much we have improved the performance on DVR with respect to Neutron. Uh, and then we'll go over the future plans for DVR. So um, before diving deep into uh, DVR, uh, deep dive discussion, I just want to give you a, an overview of uh, what DVR is and what legacy uh, routing means. Uh, there might be some new audience in here, so for their benefit, I just wanted to go over uh, an overview. So if you look at the uh, legacy routing scenario, so the picture that you're seeing here is a legacy router where all the routing happens in a centralized node, network node. So in this case, what happens is like when a VM1 one wants to talk to VM2, uh, in this case, it's shown as compute node 1 and compute node 2. They, they both are in two different compute nodes. Uh, but when they try to ping to each other, so all the traffic has to hit the network node and then come back uh, to the compute node 2 where the VM2 resides. Uh, this is the same case even if VM1 and VM2 reside in the same compute node. Even if they are residing, they are neighbors, they still cannot uh, reach each other before hitting the network node. So this was one of the major issues that we were seeing, um, where inter-subnet traffic has to go hit the network node and then come back. And, and then again, for floating IP, so all the floating IP traffic that you wanted to forward for your VMs has to go through the network node, which, which made the network node as a single bottleneck, because you can't access, um, you can't run how many namespaces on the network node. Uh, and the next one is like a default SNET, because right now, um, the default SNET is also done in the network node, where you provide VMs with external gateway connectivity, so that traffic also goes through the centralized network node. Again, metadata agent, all those things work uh, normally through the network node. So in the case of DVR, uh, 
in the case of DVR, what we have done is basically instead of having the router just on the network node, we have actually duplicated the router in the compute nodes. Okay, so wherever the VM is, okay, we we now start the router on the particular compute node, and then you have a local router in the compute node to route the traffic from one VM to another VM. So you don't the traffic does not hit the network node all the way just because it wants to talk to the another VM, which is which is its own neighbor or it's residing on a different compute node. So all east west this is called this one we call it as east west traffic. Um, so all these east-west traffic does not need to go to the network node and come back. So it's just from compute node to compute node. And again, for the floating IP, as I said, in order to reduce the bottleneck on the network node, we moved the floating IP uh, to be local on the compute nodes. So any north-south direction that you wanted to send traffic back and forth, uh, we tried to implement the floating IP in a separate namespace within the compute node. So any traffic that's coming in from outside that wants to hit the VM, it can directly hit the compute node and then reach your VM and go out. It doesn't need to come to the network node and then go to the compute nodes. Uh, the only thing that we retained in the uh, legacy uh, network node is basically the SNAT, because the SNAT portion, we still wanted to have it as a centralized one. Uh, this one, I think, already um, Carl spoke about this one in, in today's morning discussion. Uh, but again, I'm reiterating this one. Uh, so the SNAT stuff is still in, in the centralized network node. Uh, the reason we wanted to maintain that was because there was some of the um, services that we had was centralized, basically the VPN as a service. Uh, it, we cannot distribute VPN as a service everywhere while we're distributing the SNAT. We wanted to have certain uh, singleton services that we wanted to run in a centralized node, and, and certain services we can distribute. So, uh, in, so giving a thought on that, so we just retain the SNAT to be on the centralized node. So that's why it's in the centralized node. So if only for default SNAT traffic, your traffic will hit the network node and go out. For, but, but for the rest of the traffic, you can actually go from your compute node outside. Wait, can you forward the slides? So um, before I get into the deep dive for the uh, benefit of the audience here, so if you guys have missed the Paris Summit for the overview of the DVR, uh, I have posted a link in here. So this takes you to the uh, video recording of the session that we had for the overview of DVR. So for your benefit, um, you can actually take a look at the link and then uh, go through the overview. So uh, before diving deep into the uh, DVR discussion, I just wanted to give, again, a, a refreshment course of the configuration of DVR. So basically, we have um, a configuration that we need to do on the neutron.conf file. And then also, uh, there's a configuration that we need to do on l3agent.ini. So the one on the neutron.conf, there it says router underscore distributed equal to true is a global flag which allows the plugin uh, to configure a distributor router. So this has nothing to do with the agent. It's just on the plugin side. On the agent side, um, you can actually start the agent in three different modes. In order to retain the old legacy uh, router uh, functionality, we have left it. Uh, and provided one agent mode called as DVR legacy, uh, agent mode equal to legacy, that would actually uh, exactly replicate the old model where it was a centralized router, it has nothing to do with it. And then the, uh, the agent mode equal to DVR underscore SNAT is basically a combination of a legacy mode as well as uh, a service node, what we call it as, or a network node. So it can act as a network node where it can actually host both the legacy routers as well as the distributor routers. So when, when I say um, DVR underscore, underscore uh, SNAT can do both legacy and the distributor routers, so that can be configured um, by admins. So we have admin-only privileges for that. So admin can actually override, because we, ha we do have APIs to create router, distributed, router equal to distributed true or router distributed equal to false, but that is only uh, done by admins, so uh, tenants are not allowed to modify that because tenants normally, when they create routers, they actually follow the global flag that has been configured. If router underscore distributed equal to true configured in your data center, then any tenants who's coming in on that cloud infrastructure, if they and they create a router, it will be a, a distributed router. But admins can override, and if they wanted to create legacies, they can do it. And admin can also migrate or convert a legacy router uh, to a centralized router. So 
So uh, there is another configuration file on for the L2 agent. So uh, on the L2 side, there is another flag enable distributed underscore routing equal to true. And then um, for tunneling, we need to enable tunneling equal to true. And the local IP, I think you can provide the IP of the local compute node host. And tunnel type, what we supported initially was the uh, VXLAN. Um, we have also tested with GRE. It works with VXLAN, GRE, and we have also implemented a VLAN version of it. So uh, all those three types are taken care. And we have a dependency on L2 population, so make sure that you turn on the L2 population uh, for these items. So all these configurable items that I have mentioned in this configuration file can be enabled by a, a single flag in DevStack. So if you guys are using uh, DevStack to test DVR, uh, there is a single flag called DVR Q underscore DVR underscore mode. You can just enable Q underscore DVR underscore mode equal to either DVR or DVR underscore SNAT or legacy. Based on that, it will actually configure all these config files for you and make your life easier. And then you can test your DVR um, for infrastructure. Now, moving on to the uh, deep dive portion of the DVR. So uh, the picture that you guys are seeing here is basically uh, all in one, a single node where you wanted to deploy. Basically, this is for test purpose if you want to uh, test it. Uh, so the blue circles that you are seeing is all uh, namespaces. Uh, those are specific namespaces that have been created for DVR. Um, the orange circle that you're seeing uh, is basically the legacy router uh, QR namespace. So you have a QR namespace, you have a FIP namespace, and you have an SNAT namespace. And this node is the all-in-one node, so it supports both legacy and DVR. So you need to start up this node as the DVR underscore SNAT mode. Uh, so the agent is the agent that is L3 agent that is actually running in this node is actually running in DVR underscore SNAT mode. So if you look at the agents that you're you're running, you have DHCP agent, you have L3, L2, metadata, and NOVA. So it's it's kind of all in one uh, single box to test pretty makes it easy for you guys to test it and validate it. The only one thing that on a single node you will not realize is basically uh, when, when VXLAN tunnels are getting created and flow rules are getting added. Um, so when traffic, when you want to e really test the east-west traffic, you basically need a, a two node setup. So uh, in a single node setup, you cannot realize what is happening because you, you, you don't see those uh, or don't realize those things. So it's the better thing to do is basically go to the, uh, a dual node setup. So um, in a dual node setup, so what I'm showing here is basically a, a network node with the DVR underscore SNET on the right of my side. On, on the left of my side here is a compute node. So in a compute node, you have um, basically L3 service running, L3 agent is running, L2 agent is running, metadata is running, and NOVA is running. So in previously in legacy routers, you don't run L3 agents on all compute nodes, but in DVR, you make sure that you need to run L3 agents on all the compute nodes, because that is a, a must. Uh, that's how uh, we configure the routers and other namespaces on the compute node. So th that is a basic requirement. And um, if you see here on compute nodes, um, we have a, a QR namespace. We have another QR namespace. Basically, these two uh, represents three different net networks. And uh, if you say um, the red and yellow network belongs to like tenant A, and then the, the pink one represents tenant B. So tenant B has his, so his own router, like QR. So he has his own QR namespace. And tenant A has his, his own QR namespace. But uh, for both tenant A and tenant B are basically sharing a single FIP namespace on a compute node. So for north-south traffic, for the traffic to go out and come in for the VM, you basically use one single FIP namespace for one external network, and it has been it has been shared between the tenants. That's how it works. So uh, for a single external network that you have, you always need to see if is there a FIP namespace that's been created on a compute compute node, and then if the FIP namespace is created, and if you have all the uh, rules, IP tables rules configured in the FIP namespace, then your FIP traffic will actually go through for any VMs that you have configured for FIP. And for, um, again, on the compute node, that the things that you need to make sure um, that is in there is basically the BREX bridge. You need to create a BREX bridge for external traffic 
if you want to, if you are intending to provide the north-south traffic. Um, but if you wanted to just have east-west, then you don't need to create a BREX and east-west traffic. For any SNAT traffic that has to go in for a VM that does not have a floating IP, uh, all the way the traffic will go through the BR int, come through the uh, VE pairs to the BR turn, and then reach the SNAT node through the BR turn, go to the BR int, and then go through the uh, SNAT namespace outside. So that's how uh, the traffic from compute node to the network node will go and then get out. So um, I, I just showed you in the picture like what are the namespaces that are to be created. But once you are running a DVR uh, on a DVR SNET node, basically just run a pseudo um, IP net NS command, and you should be able to see all the namespaces that are in there. So this one shows, uh, OK, I, I do have a single node configuration in this case. And then uh, I have configured a FIP for a VM. And then I have an SNET namespace, a Q router namespace, and basically a, a DHCP namespace for the particular network that you have configured for. So if you see all these namespaces configured, then you can actually go into each of these namespaces and see, OK, what are the ports that are actually in each of these namespaces? Because e I'll show you, go into the uh, in-depth and show you what are the ports that are in the namespace. Uh, so the single node one, just what I showed. So this is an internal diagram that shows you all the ports, all the virtual ports, all the VE pairs that are currently configured uh, for DVR and for legacy routers. So it's, it's an all-in-one. So if you see here um, the left side legacy QR namespace that I've created between the BR int and the BREX, that is basically a Q router namespace uh, in the case of a legacy router. On the, on the middle one, that you, what you're seeing is uh, the QR namespace and a FIP namespace. So that is basically if one of your VM requires a, a FIP, or you, you have a QR namespace and a FIP namespace. And the last one that you're seeing is, a, is basically an SNAT namespace. For any of the VMs that are in here, uh, you need uh, public access. Just, you just use the SNAT namespace. So in this case, uh, you can see the QR namespace and the FIP namespace. The, the, these two are two different namespaces. The way that you tie up these two namespaces is through a VETH pair. So basically, the one that you're seeing in between the FPR, AAA, and RFP, FPR denotes um, floating IP namespace to router namespace, and RFP denotes router namespace to floating IP namespace. So uh, the suffix will tell you exactly uh, what the namespace or what the intention for the VETH pairs are. And these two VETH pairs internally has an IP address, uh, which is an 169 address, the local uh, slash 30 subnet address, that 32 slash um, address that we are using. And um, that's not been seen outside, but internally we are using those IP addresses. And the one that you're seeing down below, the FGAAA, is basically the, we call it as a floating IP agent gateway port. Um, the reason we created that port is because we are providing north-south connectivity from a compute node, you don't have a, a gateway port in there in order to send traffic outside. So the reason we don't have a gateway port, we need to kind of replicate some sort of gateway port. So if SNAT is created or uh, configured on your network node, we just create another port on the same subnet and then call it as a floating IP agent gateway port and make it reside and bind it to a host where your compute resides. So that way, that Q, FG is basically the floating IP agent gateway port, and that will actually consume an IP address from your public subnet. So we are actually working with um, Call and other people in the community um, to actually get away from that uh, logic because we don't want to consume uh, one public IP address. So uh, when when BGP-based routing is actually enabled, uh, and then router networks are being introduced, so we will actually slowly get away from that. But for the for time being, we will actually be consuming one IP address uh, on the FG port. So this is basically the high-level overview of the namespace. And um, you see the SNAT namespace, you see the QR namespace, and you see the FIP namespace. And this is basically for the legacy routers. And you also see the DHCP namespaces. So, so I think this gives you a, an overview of how it, the DVR is being achieved in, in a kind of a single node. I'll, I'll next, in the next slide, I'll show you what's in the compute node, basically. So th this one is basically um, 
so I showed you the pseudo IP net NS, and then if you want to get into the SNAT namespace and see what are in there. So in an SNAT namespace, you see the QG port, which is basically the gateway port that's, that was already in a legacy router. Apart from that, for DVR purpose, so um, for, for n number of subnets that you're trying to add to the router, uh, for those, num those many number of um, networks that you're trying to add to that router, there will be an additional SG port, the internal port that you have, we are creating. This SG port denotes the SNAT gateway port. Uh, this is basically uh, internal facing private IP address ports so that we can actually route the traffic from the SNAT namespace to any of the subnets that are residing behind the scenes. So if you have a 10.0 network, you will have a 10.0. something port. And then if you have a 10.1 address, you will have a 10.1. address on that SNAT namespace. And DVR namespace on compute node. Uh, so again, as I said, if you are only having um, a network node and a compute node, so this is a clear picture that shows you what, what you can expect on a compute node. On a compute node, you can have a BREX, BR tunnel, and then you have a, a QR namespace, which actually tries to route traffic between the red and the, and the green network. And for some reason, you wanted to assign a floating IP to the green VM that is in there. Then you create a FIP namespace, and then you have a FG port on the FIP namespace. And then you have the VE pads connecting these two things. And then your traffic will actually flow um, through the BREX outside. So um, this is, again, uh, just for, uh, if you have like two tenants uh, or two routers, so this is how it's connected. And then these two tenants are, as I mentioned in the previous picture, in the first picture where I showed all in one. So they are actually now connected through the FIP namespace. And a single FIP namespace is being shared between the two tenants' QR namespace. Again, um, this one is the internals on the namespace. So if you look at the FIP namespace, as I showed you, uh, the FIP namespace has the FG port, which is the floating IP agent gateway port, which has the uh, public IP address. And then the, there is an internal port, the VETH pair that's being, getting created. And that I said that the VETH pair consumes an IP address, a slash 32 address, 169 address. That is what it's shown in here, like 169 address. So this is the basic. QR routers. So uh, in QR, the additional one that we have added for the DVR is basically the RFP. This is to tie up between the FIP namespace and the router namespace. So this is the one that shows you what uh, the 169 address that is on the router side. So. Um, so these are the things that you can actually verify uh, after you create a port or a router. Uh, you can verify, go into the BR int, show the OVS VS CTL will show you what are the ports that are associated. And then you can actually associate those ports with the namespace ports that are in the namespace. Um, so that will actually clearly tell you everything is working as per expect expectations. So um, I think that's all I had on the namespaces. On the services, basically, as I mentioned, uh, for the Juno cycle, uh, for the Kilo, we did finish off the VPN as a support for DVR. Uh, still, I think we, we worked on a blueprint for supporting the east-west firewall as a service, but we couldn't achieve that in time because uh, there was not enough consensus on that idea for the uh, east-west firewall as a service. So we will be continuing our effort on the firewall as a service for east-west uh, during the Liberty cycle. But for the rest of all the services uh, that are currently supported by DVR, and then so uh, this is the namespace uh, diagram that shows you how the services are implemented. So if you see here, um, uh, an LBAS LBAS does not have any correlation with router, so you can actually associate a web port. So that um, currently DVR supports LBAS uh, because we do 
uh, the only issue that we had with LBAS was when we create a floating IP to the VIP port. So we need to make sure uh, if that floating IP uh, port is on that compute node, we need to allow the floating IP agent gateway port to be created on that compute node. So we have fixed that problem. So that should work uh, as expected. And then um, in, the, in the legacy QR namespace, if you see it in a centralized network node, you have firewall as a service and VPN as a service running within the QR namespace. So now what we have done is um, we have actually, uh, for VPN as a service, for, with the DVR, uh, the VPN as a service, uh, basically the, the strong swan driver or the open swan driver uh, will be running within the SNAT namespace. It will not be running within the QR namespace as expected uh, in the legacy case. And for firewall as a service, we do have support for north-south, as I mentioned, not for the, not for the east-west. For the north-south, um, it is for the legacy SNAT traffic that actually goes for VM through the SNAT namespace. You have firewall as a service on the SNAT namespace. And also, we have firewall as a service on the QR namespace uh, that is actually listening on the RFP port for any traffic that's going down north-south. Uh, I think that's all I had on the services and on the namespace. So, Vivek will actually now cover the, the VLAN part up for the DVR. Thanks, Swami. Uh, so as uh, you might know, uh, in the initial release for Juno, we happened to cover uh, the VXLAN and release support for DVR. And uh, uh, in Kylo, we managed to plug the gap for VLAN. Uh, so as of Kylo release, uh, what you can expect from distributed routers is that uh, you will be able to actually route packets across two networks that are both VLAN based. You could actually route packets across two networks, one being VLAN, one being VXLAN. You could also uh, have a distributed router route packets across two networks where one being a VLAN based network, another being a GRE based network. And uh, we continue to retain the facility of routing across VXLAN networks and routing across GRE networks from st uh, stable Juno code base as well. So, uh, so I think like uh, I'll, I'll just quickly go through uh, how uh, you know DVR works with VLAN and release. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, as you could see, like if if VM1 wants to communicate to VM2 and VM1 and VM2 are in two different uh, VLAN networks, right? So VM1 actually sends a packet to the uh, to the to its default gateway, which is a router. So that packet would be captured by the local uh, distributed router, QR, which is a replicated router. And then that will route the packet. When it routes the packet back, it will actually put the packet back onto the green network. Uh, and then, the, and then the, and the packet on the green network comes into the integration bridge, goes to the physical bridge. And as you could see, like, you know, in the common data network on the wire, you will see that the packet actually carries uh, the green, uh, uh, you know, uh, network segmentation ID. But it carries a MAC called LMAC, which is a DVR unique MAC, right? It's not the source VM's MAC, but it's a DVR unique MAC, which uh, is a translated MAC. Uh, and we happen to do that because, uh, you know, since uh, since the router namespaces are replicated, if we happen to actually transmit the uh, um, router interface MAC right on the data tank, then what we will uh, encounter in the underlay is uh, MAC table thrashing. So we took the uh, router interface MAC, which is a replicated router, and then we translated it to a unique MAC that's assigned per compute node. And then uh, actually the routing happens in the source, the originating node. And after that, all the package is switched uh, all the way back to the destination VM. So the routing happens in the source node, packet gets switched to the destination node. And similarly, when VM2 wants to communicate with VM1, the routing for VM2 to VM1 will actually happen into the QR on that node. And then the packet will all the way get switched back all the way to VM1. So, uh, and then like traffic handling at L2, like uh, uh, I just want to mention the facts, like uh, L2 is uh, a bit of a challenge uh, to do in DVR because of uh, bump traffic handling. So there are certain uh, things that we took care in the L2, L2, L2 level to ensure that, uh, you know, like uh, we don't actually like, goof up the data network because of replicated routers. So as you could see, like, you know, ARP requests, we have been careful, like we are blocking all ARP requests that are, uh, generated, uh, you know, for the DVR interfaces. We also block uh, packets that are destined for a DVR interface max, uh, and we ensure that we translate uh, router interface max to unique max in egress packets, and we do reverse translation for ingress packets. Okay, so this is typically like uh, a bit of a deep dive, which uh, you know 
be easy to follow. Uh, as you know, like uh, uh, in, a, in a typical VLAN uh, flow, we will have two bridges that participate in traffic in, uh, uh, in a KVM compute node. One is the uh, integration bridge, and other is the physical bridge. So as you could see, like, uh, you know, these, these are the tables within those bridges that are responsible in order to actually forward a routed, uh, you know, distributively routed uh, packet. So when a packet comes into table 0, uh, say VM1 tries to send a routed packet to VM2, packet comes to table 0 on the uh, originating compute node, it goes to the local router for, uh, you know, for routing. The local router routes the packet, puts it back into table 0, and at this point, normal action is taken, and the packet comes to the physical bridge in the originating node. And as you could see, like the uh, uh, physical bridge actually uh, transfers the packet uh, that comes from the integration bridge to table 1. And here what we actually do is we uh, replace the source MAC, which will be the distributed route interface MAC, to a unique uh, local MAC for that node. And from there, we do the usual translation of swapping the local VLAN to uh, the segment VLAN that's configured by the tenant. And then the packet goes out with whatever the uh, tenant VLAN is configured on the destination network. So that's how the egress to the cloud happens. Uh, the one in blues are the new tables that uh, we introduced in order to support uh, VLAN for DVR. And for ingress from the cloud, uh, the, the packet comes into the uh, uh, Ethernet uh, data trunk port. It hits the table zero on physical bridge. It's forwarded to a learning blocker table uh, because since we are using uh, uh, unique local Macs, we don't want those Macs to be actually learned by our, uh, you know, our, our bridges. So we skip the learning process and then we forward the frame all the way to uh, integration bridge. Integration bridge actually figures out that this is a DVR router packet because it uses a unique Mac. And so what it does is it forwards to a DVR to LMAC table, which is again a new table we introduced for VLAN. And that table actually takes the job of uh, swapping out this uh, unique MAC and puts the right router interface MAC. And it also strips off the VLAN. And then it puts the packet directly to the VM port. So VM would, for, for VM, it will be very transparent that a distributed routing happened. It will see the packet as, so, as though it's appearing from its own uh, default router. So that's how we accomplish ingress to cloud. So I'll leave it to Adolfo to uh, pursue on stability and performance. Hi. How's everyone doing? My name is Adolfo. Um, I did some of the DVR testing during the development, and so I'll talk about a couple of things that we have in there right now. Uh, the first one is multiple external networks. As Swami mentioned before, we are actually supporting that on DVR, and what that basically means is you can actually have multiple external networks. Uh, you will get a FIP namespace, that is the floating IP namespace, if you configure that on each one of the compute nodes. But the FIP namespace will not be uh, duplicated for tenants. It will be shared across tenants, but it will be duplicated across compute nodes because it is DVR. Um, so it is on the by default and it is working now. Right. Now another thing that we also introduced was the migration of the legacy routers to DVR routers. Um, if you really think about it, it's actually quite complicated, right? We're moving namespaces around, ports around. We're taking the router, putting it in the compute nodes. So um, it's a bit of a challenge to actually do that. Um, however, the process itself is actually pretty simple from the CLI perspective. Uh, you do have to take a couple of things into consideration. One of them is you have to disassociate any services that you have uh, associated with that legacy router, especially because some of the services maybe don't work with DVR because of their nature or uh, other features, um, something that happens. If you try to migrate a legacy router uh, to a DVR router and you don't disassociate those services, you would actually get an error message and you won't be allowed to do it, so you'll be reminded that. Another thing you have to be kind of careful about is if you have floating IPs associated with the router, you might want to take them and disassociate them before you do this, or you could get yourself into some sort of corner, special cases where you end up with something you don't want. So it's always just easier to associate the uh, floating IP. Uh, once you do that, it's pretty simple. I mean, you just do, um, obviously, you have to have elevated credentials. But you go to the router, um, you say, you know, it's a neutron CLI command. You do an update. Uh, you set the admin state up to false, which basically means, you know, admin state up, you know, admin state down. Uh, and then you go and then you set the flag, admin, you know, router ID distributed to true. And then you bring the router back up with admin state um, and I'm sorry, that's a typo in the, in the slide. It should be it should actually admin state up true. Once you do that, the router is now a DVR router, and then it will do whatever you need to do. You don't have to worry about all that happens in the background. We move the namespaces around and all the other ports. Uh, next slide. So I'm going to talk about a bit, it's still a uh, 
stability and performance. One of the things that we run into uh, when uh, developing DVR and actually pushing it upstream is that DVR, by, by definition, is uh, um, distributed. Most of the tests that you guys are familiar upstream run on a single node uh, setup. Uh, you know, if you ever push a Tempest test or if you ever run a Tempest uh, runs, they use a single node setup. Now that's great, except that it doesn't really touch all of the parts of DVR because you need a multi-node. Um, so that's one of the things that we worked on was to create a multi-node setup upstream for running multi-node uh, tests on multi-node. Um, also, there were a couple of stability, actually quite a few stability issues that we had to work on Gino. Uh, with DVR because the scheduler does have to move a lot more things around to make everything work and it becomes exponential the more compute nodes you add. Um, so just so you know, DVR now has uh, two tests upstream, a single node test and a multi-node uh, job substream. The multi-node is actually still an experimental so it won't be run um, unless you actually request that and if you know how to request that I'm pretty sure you, if you know how to do it you'll be able to do it. Um, hope, we are hoping that at some point the multi-node job will become a voting job and it will help prevent some of the defects that we're, uh, uh, that we're getting in. Most of them were due because the feature that was being broken or the defect was being introduced in a place where it only would show up if you had multi-nodes. Uh, so I'm going to talk about performance and benefits uh, of DVR and this is actually, I'm, I'm kind of fond of this one. As I said, I was a test engineer for this. And um, so let's talk about performance and data and some things, the, the benefits that DVR brings to you. So we have two types of traffic, right? And I'm talking about all this traffic is routing traffic. Switching traffic doesn't touch the router. So we, I'm going to just say, when I say flows, I mean routed flows. So there's two types of flows, north and south. I mean north, south, and east and west. North, south is your floating IP address. You know, it comes out of your cloud, out to the internet or to whatever it is outside of it. East, west is between the VMs. Um, what I want you to take from this next set of slides is the following two benefits. On the north-south, you actually have a lot of uh, uh, performance benefits because you no longer have to go to the network node to get out. You go directly from the compute node to whatever is outside. Most of the time, that's the internet. Maybe it's another cloud. On the east-west, you also have a lot of benefit because the router now uh, lives physically in the same compute node as the VMs. Um, so. The, the routing of the traffic is actually just done in memory. You know, it doesn't have to go out of the box, come back to the box, and get routed. Now, that happens only if the VMs are in the same hypervisor. But if they are in different hypervisors, you still get a small uh, benefit, but it's not as big as if they are in the same one. Uh, so this uh, diagram tries to explain what I just said. On the right-hand side, we have a legacy router set up. And uh, the top is east-west and the bottom is uh, north-south. So again, on the right-hand side with the legacy uh, routing, as you can see, the traffic flows, can we go back to the As you can see on the, on the traffic flows, the lines represent the flow. You see on the right side, they all have to go out, even for the VMs that are in the same computer node, they have to go out, go to the network node, and come back. For the north-south, they have to do the same thing. They have to go out of the computer node, go to the network node, and then they go out. Now, on the left-hand side is a DVR uh, implementation. Now, you can see it's pretty obvious the benefit you can get. One, if the VMs are on the same compute node, traffic does not leave that compute node. You don't touch the actual physical switching hardware, right? It's all done in the compute node. If they're in different compute nodes, even then, you still get to skip the network node. You go from compute node to compute node. So that's, you know, it's a little bit of a leg. Now, on the north-south, they go directly from the compute nodes out. So you skip everyone skips the north-south, uh, I'm sorry, the network node on a DVR. Now, this is just uh, to show the, the, the benefits. Next slide. I actually did, uh, I ran this test, and this is a pretty simple test. I mean, and please don't take these numbers, the, the, the absolute value, because that's very dependent on what type of hardware you're running. But I did this test, I think, Friday, okay? The red ones are CVR uh, legacy, and the green are DVR. Now, on the north-south table, if you can see that, the actual throughput of VM is almost the maximum of my system. And my system is 10 gigs in here, OK? The, uh, um, the legacy routers only reach 21%. Now, again, please don't take that too hard. This is a system that I didn't spend much time setting up. But I just, all I wanted to do is exact same system. All these tests are being run at exactly the same time. So everything's hold. Everything's uh, 
being hold uh, equal except the type of router you're using, DVR or CVR. Now on the right hand side, that's the one that is pretty impressive. Um, this VMs happen, the green VMs happen to be in the same compute node. Okay, the red ones are also in the same compute nodes, but the red ones are legacy router and the green ones are DVR. Now the, in this system, the throughput was 10 times more for the DVR system. Again, these numbers, you know, depends on what you do with it, you, your system might be different, but everything held constant on the same test. The legacy router versus a DVR router outperform almost 10 times. Um, now, I encourage everybody to go home and try this test out because it's very simple. Just put the VMs in the same compute nodes, put the VMs where you want it to do, and run traffic through them, and you'll see the performance increase that you get from DVR. That's it. Uh, do we have any other slides? Yeah. So I think uh, before we wind up, uh, we just wanted to give you a, a overview of what are the features we are yet to work on for the Liberty Cycle. Uh, as Carl mentioned in the, in the morning session, like IPv6 support for DVR will be one of the higher topics that we will be working on. And then the HA service for uh, DVR. We already have patches out there, but we need to finish it off during the Liberty Cycle. And we have um, patches also for manual move of SNAT from one node to another node in case of maintenance shutdown, like you wanted to move the SNAT namespace from one node to another node. We need that feature. So we'll be working on that. And again, as I said, on the stability side, we wanted to make sure the multi-node stability CI is more stable enough. And then we wanted to make it voting so that everyone takes into consideration that DVR is there and then no one breaks DVR. Um, and then uh, distributed SNAP will be another thing that we wanted to venture because if you wanted to distribute everything. So I, I think hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Uh, I didn't make anyone to sleep. If I made you to sleep, just wake up. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, we can answer that. Yeah, can you go to the mic and... Or... What is the maximum number of nodes required in multi-node configuration? Oh, how many? I think we, we tested like more than... Um, how many nodes you guys tested, you know? It's not in the single digits, if that's what you're asking. It's actually quite, we have tested production level uh, setups. It's, it's in hundreds. Yes. Yes. A uh, question here. Is the no SNAT case working? Uh, and is that going through the centralized router? So I don't want to do NAT. I want to route directly into the virtual networks. Uh, so can you come again? So the no SNAT case. There is a switch. That's you DDR can underscore SNAT case. OK. No, no SNAT, so no NAT. Okay, right? no, I want to no route SNAT. directly into the tenant networks. Okay. Is that something you were working on or considering? Is that working? Because in some neutral implementations, it's actually working. If I hook up the uplink network, I can say no SNAT. Mm -hmm. Did you do that work? Oh, you're talking about enable SNAT equal to true or false yes. when you configure the SNAT? No, that we have not done it yet. So, so you always true. assume there is NAT? We always assume that there is a NAT when okay. you configure an external gateway. OK, thank you. That's I have a question on the north-south traffic yes. um, about the, the physical network, the assumptions on the physical network. Are we assuming that all the compute nodes in the data center are on one gigantic layer two bridge network across all top of rack switches? Or is there, um, how, how is it handled if, um, if you don't have one giant uh, external network that all your compute nodes can sit on? So that's one of the options you have. You can right. You have a DVR compute node or a legacy uh, router. So, I mean, without really getting into the much of details, you play around with that to make sure you get the. So, you, so want. you can do east-west with DVR and north-south with legacy simultaneously. Uh, no, I think uh, you, you can't do that. But you can still do it, like as I mentioned here. Like you can have a network node configured as DVR as NAT, yeah. and then you can still do default. I think um, we are getting late right now, so uh, okay. let me take it offline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can discuss it. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for joining the session. <laughs> <laughs>